Hello everyone! A lot of you have requested I do a video on the Hungarian attacking legend uh, Rudolf Charusek. Uh, so here it is. Uh, the game was played in 1893 and uh, in those days uh, Charusek was considered to be one of the top 10 players in the world. Uh, only three years uh, from this game, in 1896, he, he defeated uh, he defeated world champion Emmanuel Lasker at an international tournament in Nuremberg. So quite a guy and uh, it was uh, Ruben Fine who said that uh, watching Rudolf's games was like uh, reading good poetry. Now, um, uh, he started learning chess when he was about 16 years old. And uh, he couldn't afford a chess book or anything to start learning from. Uh, so he borrowed a really big chess book and he copied it entirely by hand. So for those of you who have access to, to chess books and don't study from them, uh, always remember Rudolf uh, Charusek who had to copy an entire book by hand at... Uh, even have anything to learn from. So let's see this game and I think it uh, features uh, an opening I haven't shown yet on my channel, it's the Danish Gambit, so I do hope uh, you enjoy it. Uh, Charusek has the white pieces and he opens the game with e4. Uh, we have e5 and uh, yes, his opponent is Jakob Volner. Uh, the reason why there is a hoodie guy there, for those of you who are <laughs> older subscribers to my channel do know the story of the hoodie guy. Uh, for those of you who are new to this channel, uh, whenever I can't find any information or a photo uh, of someone's opponent, then I use a photo of a hoodie guy here. And the reason I'm wearing a hoodie is to honor the hoodie guy. So, uh, Mr. Volner here plays e5, uh, and we have d4. e captures on d4, so the center game is accepted, and now c3. This is the Danish gambit. We have d captures on c3, uh, bishop to c4. Uh, and now knight to f6. Here, uh, why did black decline this uh, b2 pawn? Uh, unlike for some other gambits, here, if anyone plays this against you with the white pieces, uh, feel free to capture the b2 pawn as well. This is this is all fine for black. Uh, if you capture on b2, yes, he does play bishop captures on b2, and now he has these uh, two strong bishops, but you can easily prevent uh, this. Simply play d5, and after he captures, now comes knight to f6. And this will basically force uh, the following variation. Uh, your opponent will capture on f7, this is with check. Uh, you capture the bishop and after he captures your queen, now you play bishop to b4 check. Uh, unless he wants to lose a piece, he has to block with the queen, uh, otherwise you're gonna uh, grab the queen with the rook. So after queen blocks, you capture it and after knight captures, simply go rook to e8 and uh, white doesn't really have anything here. Black is perfectly fine and the material is equal. Uh, you'll, you, you won't have any problems playing this game as black. So if someone plays this against you with white, feel free to capture the b2 pawn after bishop to c4. Uh, but in those days Mr. Volner didn't know this, so he played knight to f6. Uh, which is still okay, so th this doesn't give white anything really. Uh, knight to f3, again offering the b2 pawn, again Mr. Volner isn't interested, we have bishop to c5, and now knight captures on c3. d6. Uh, we have castles and castles. And here it seems uh, black managed to fi finish his development. The bishop is nicely placed on c5, there's a knight on f6, and all of his pieces are ready to enter the game. Bishop g4 maybe, knight coming to c6, so it seems like black is even better here. Uh, he's not that much behind on development, one piece, and uh, he's up a pawn. Uh, but those were the good old days, and white immediately goes for knight to g5. And here a modern player uh, if he saw this knight to g5 move, he would simply ignore it, he would continue the game knight to c6, and he would keep his pawn advantage. Uh, but in those days, uh, people were people were seeing ghosts pretty often. So he plays h, uh, h6, uh, wanting to kick away the knight, uh, defending against a threat that, that, that really wasn't there. And this gives uh, Rudolf an opportunity to create a very nice attack. He plays knight captures on f7. Uh, rook captures and now of course not capturing with the bishop because two, two pieces are of course uh, more valuable than a rook uh, but now he pushes e5 and uh, now you can't capture the pawn if d captures then you lose the queen the queen is undefended on d8 and uh, well your knight is attacked on f6 so if you don't want to be down a piece you have to move the knight knight to h7 would have been a better move but uh, here uh, Mr. Volner plays knight to g4 and here we have e6 and this is the critical moment in the game. Uh, it's also an interesting exercise, I, I guess, for you guys to to really feel uh, what what it feels like when you're attacked. So uh, try to 
consider playing this position with black and try to find the best defense for black in this position. Uh, even pause the video for it as, uh, you know, if you if you play a lot of chess, you will play against a lot of aggressive players and you will get attacked quite a lot. So being able to find a decent uh, defensive move is is just as valuable as being able to find a decent attacking move. So I do hope you were able to find it. If you have, you're a great player. And if you just want to enjoy the show, uh, the best defense here would be actually Rook captures on F2. Uh, because now, if white pushes e7, this comes with check from the bishop on c4, also the queen is now attacked, uh, now comes rook to f7. This blocks the check from the bishop and also checks the white king, uh, as the bishop on c5 uh, is opened to an attack on the king. And after king to h1, now comes queen captures on e7. And after rook captures, now you have this bishop to e6 move, and this is the move you had to find. Uh, bishop to e6, and now if white captures the queen, now comes knight f2 check, king g1, knight captures queen on d1, again with a discovered check from the bishop, king moves, knight checks again, king moves, knight checks on d3, and after king moves once again, and now comes the bishop captures on c4, and as you can see, uh, black, black is much better here. So... Uh, this is uh, the move Mr. Volner unfortunately missed. So after e6, he tried queen to h4. He decided, okay, my opponent sacrificed a piece, I'm gonna sacrifice this rook on f7, and then I'm gonna checkmate my opponent, as I do have a nice attack on h2. Also, three of my pieces are attacking his f2 pawn after he captures the rook. So, no problems here. Uh, here, white played e captures on f7. This is with check, king to f8 and now bishop to f4. Bishop to f4 is an important defensive move for white, as uh, the f2 pawn is protected by the rook, but now bishop protects uh, the h2 pawn, not allowing checkmate. So here black played knight captures on f2, threatening all sorts of discoveries, also attacking the queen. Uh, queen to e2 was played, and here uh, knight to g4 check. Uh, we have king to, h, uh, king to h1 defending, and now comes bishop to d7, uh, not allowing white to play queen to queen to e8 checkmate. So white improved, rook a to e1, again threatening uh, queen to e8, and here black really doesn't have a good response. Uh, here black tried knight to c6, and now again uh, you have a very nice position to solve. It's actually uh, mate in three for white, so feel free to pause the video here and uh, try to find uh, a nice checkmate for white. It's in three moves. Uh, I will give it a couple of seconds for you to decide whether you want to pause the video. So, those of you who were able to solve it, uh, congratulations. And if you solved the first one as well, then you're an amazing player. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, the move is relatively simple. It's queen to e8 check. Uh, here, black doesn't really have any options. He has to capture it. It doesn't matter if black captures with the bishop or the rook, the idea is the same. Uh, we had the rook captures with check, and now comes pawn captures rook. And now uh, it doesn't matter uh, what what uh, black plays, there's only one move, you can only capture the queen with the bishop, and after bishop captures, now comes bishop captures on d6. Uh, it's a discovered check from the rook, also it's a check from the bishop, the bishop is slicing all the way here, uh, so this is checkmate. So I do hope you were able to find this, and I do hope you enjoyed uh, this game by the Hungarian attacking legend uh, Rudolf Charosek. And if you faced the Danish Gambit often in your own games, maybe now you will be able to uh, defend properly by knowing that you can freely capture the b2 pawn and still play a, a good game with black. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Maybe I will show his win against Lasker as it's also, as it's also a very impressive game. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Jeb Gispen and Christopher Gleason for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching and I will see you soon, uh, probably tomorrow morning uh, with an announcement video uh, for my celebratory stream. Uh, thank you all and I will see you soon.